A complaint filed with the Federal Election Commission alleges a coordinated communication and an unreported in-kind contribution to the Joe Biden presidential campaign and related entities, Fox News reports. America First Legal, an organization run by former Donald Trump White House aide Stephen Miller, filed a 13-page complaint with the FEC late last month. The complaint reads, Evidence suggests that the respondents failed to disclose coordinated expenditures constituting in-kind donations with respect to the infamous letter of 51 former intelligence officials claiming that the Hunter Biden laptop story had all the classic earmarks of Russian disinformation. The alleged campaign finance violation could trap Secretary of State Antony Blinken and former senior intelligence officials who, quote, asserted without evidence in 2020 that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation, according to Fox News. The complaint claims that Biden, the Biden for President campaign in 2020, rather, the Biden Victory Fund, the Democratic National Committee, the DNC, and the Biden Action Fund should have reported on their coordinating efforts. According to Fox News, neither the Biden 2024 presidential campaign nor the Democratic National Committee responded to inquiries for this story. The State Department also did not respond to an inquiry about Blinken's role from Fox News about the matter. So this uh, seems like a pretty legitimate inquiry to me, Jessica. I think the letter of 51 was basically an act of election interference. These individuals who signed on to this letter claiming the Hunter Biden laptop story had all of the earmarks of Russian disinformation, didn't even have the authority to make that determination. They were just asserting their opinion, yet presented it as if they were speaking from the uh, authority of current intelligence officials, and not to mention the FBI had already authenticated the veracity uh, of the laptop prior to this letter going out. So it was not only bogus, but it also serviced the big tech censorship efforts surrounding the Hunter Biden laptop story. It was this letter that helped encourage places like X and Facebook and Instagram to prevent the New York Post from being able to access its account to prevent other outlets from sharing the New York Post story regarding the Hunter Biden laptop story. And this all happened just a month or so out from the 2020 election. So it sounds like a lot of the claims that they've made are you know, fair and legal about the Hunter Biden laptop. There's a lot of things you can say when you're running for office saying this sounds like Russian disinformation or looks like Russian disinformation. It's not the complaint here. The complaint is an interesting one. Legally, it's about the coordination between the PAC, between the DNC, between the Biden Victory Fund, between all of these various entities that, you know, when you're a certain kind of campaign organization, you can't be working together. Right. So you can't have a coordinated effort between, you know, an organization that's a 501c4 and an official political campaign. You can't share your information. You can't share your intel. You can't have a coordinated effort and strategic planning done together. It sounds like that's what they have some kind of a complaint to file about. That sounds like the nature of this FEC complaint. I think it's important that we actually have our day in court for this because it's so common, especially for major political candidates with either, you know, political party on the establishment side where they have a ton of resources to secretly be working together. There's so much overlap. It's a revolving door of staff between PACs and between major political campaigns. It's obvious that strategy is shared. There's not much to be done about it, but I think the political industrial complex deserves some breaking up. So I'm happy about this complaint for, a, I think, a very different reason than a lot of people are. But I think it's good that, that it's being brought forth before the FEC. Yeah, and they have some legitimate evidence to back up this idea that the Biden campaign was co coordinating with the 51 intelligence officials on this letter. According to former CIA deputy and acting director Michael Morell, he testified to the House Judiciary Committee and the House Intelligence Committees that he was first contacted about signing on to this letter by none other than Antony Blinken, who was then a Biden campaign advisor. So it seems like the Biden campaign was whipping votes with the express intention of getting people signed on to this letter that they could then disseminate as proof that, at least in their eyes, as proof that one of the biggest stories about the Biden campaign, one of the biggest negative stories about the Biden campaign, 
was false and then coordinated with big tech outlets and pressured big tech outlets to go ahead and censor that. And there have been polls about the effect that this had on the election. Suggestions have been made that up to a quarter or maybe a third of Biden voters would have thought differently about who they were voting for had they been aware of the corruption and bribery allegations that were present in that laptop hard drive. But they either didn't know about it because it was censored or they thought that it was false because of the combination of the censorship and this letter from these intelligence officials. The fact that it was coordinated, coordinated between the campaign and the intelligence officials intentionally to uh, affect the election is precisely where this camp, uh, complaint comes from. I think it's shocking. We have members of the Democratic establishment that are fear mongering around foreign influence in our elections. When Joe Biden got $4 million over the span of his political career from APAC, it's just insane that we talk about foreign election interference as if it's the boogeyman because of the Hunter Biden laptop story, because of you know how the 2020 election went all together, all of the claims that there was Russian collusion, that there was some kind of fraud. We talk about it as if it's the boogeyman when it's just staring at us right in the face. There's obviously foreign influence on American elections. You have it plain as day. It's reported on. You can go on OpenSecrets.com and search the lobbying money and the campaign contributions taken by American members of Congress by APAC. You had Jim Himes talking in a meeting recently saying, you know what? We have a lot of meetings about Israel, but nearly none on Palestine. Why is that? And it's because they're spending a huge amount of money influencing the conversations in the halls of Congress. And I just think it's insane at this political moment that we're now having to relitigate all of the things that were said about Russian disinformation in 2020. But I think it's good because we obviously have foreign influence on our political process, on our elections, uh, but we're more mad about the fake ones, about Russian disinformation, about Chinese disinformation. I think influencing public opinion is probably just as bad as directly buying members of Congress and people running for public office in the U.S. Yeah, I think one of the other troubling things about this specific camp complaint as well is you mentioned the revolving door of individuals on campaigns to government and then to these uh, cushy TV gigs or consulting roles. And in this case, these intelligence officials who signed on to the letter, some of them were rewarded with roles then in the Biden administration as sort of a pat on the back or a thank you for helping to influence the election with false material, not to mention the fact that so many of these individuals, including the ones who were supposedly Republicans or were members of Republican administrations when they were in the intelligence community, had donated tons of money to the Biden campaign. I think the complaint alleges that about 98 percent of the political donations among this group of 51 intelligence officials went to the Biden campaign versus the Trump campaign. So they had a vested interest in disseminating this letter, signing on to this letter to help out their buddy, Joe Biden. And it was at the expense of the American people who were given false information and were in many cases not even given access to the information f to give them the ability to determine for themselves whether or not they thought it was real. It was um, simultaneously this act of uh, preventing the American people from accessing information and also claiming that they were apparently too stupid to figure out for themselves whether or not that information was true. And it's a constant demeaning of the American people when we assume that the government knows better about misinformation when repeatedly they lie to us and we find out, you know, two, three years later that what they told us was totally bunk. What's fascinating about this case is even if all of the officials who are working for the Biden campaign in 2020, the Biden Victory Fund, the Democratic National Committee, the Biden Action Fund, whether or not they were communicating in an official capacity, right, with their work emails, or if they were as individuals saying, this is something we really care about, let's circulate it with our personal cell phone numbers or whatever amongst ourselves and release this letter. It doesn't really matter to me. Does it make a difference to you, Amber, whether they use their work email or not? It's just sickening that these people all know each other very well, can all collude on an effort like this. Does it matter if they're working for separate organizations or not when they can work together in this capacity? To me, it doesn't really matter. 
And it really reveals how much of a political machine we have in this country. So just this case happening at all, I think will open a lot of Americans' eyes to how elections go on a normal basis. That this isn't that shocking to many people who have worked on political campaigns, myself included, who have seen inside of the American electoral process. It's not at all surprising. I'm sure many of these people know each other very well, have worked together before, and have very niche ways of circumventing the FEC regulations, we know most of them do. We know that this is something very standard. So I think it's good that it's being exposed. And I think there should be some more laws against this kind of collusion from happening because the exact result of this is we continue to have establishment candidates that are handpicked by the party and lifted up by all of the same people who work on every single Democratic election. You're right that this kind of thing happens all the time on campaigns. I think what's so disturbing about this particular case is just the massive impact and scale that it had in terms of the 2020 election. It really seemed like this was uh, an issue that most Americans would have thought differently about the election if they had known about it. In fact, in the complaint, they alleged that four out of five Americans uh, said that they wish they had had access to this story, but were discouraged from looking into it because of this letter. So I'm very fascinated to see where this case goes. And kudos to America First Legal for bringing this challenge forward. We'll be back with more Rising after this.